ഹദിഹിഹു يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسالون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Glory be to Allah the Most High who has allowed us to reach this point in the blessed month of Ramadan and may Allah accept all our past deeds the good of it and may Allah forgive us our shortcomings and the evils that we did before and may Allah rectify our fears and make us from those who bring about rectification amen the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to encourage the sahaba continuously upon charity upon giving fi sabilillah and Allah mentioned many places in the Quran concerning spending from your wealth <coughs> and again giving charity is an act of worship and just like all the other acts of worship it must be done sincerely for Allah and again the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that actions are based upon the intentions and everyone will be rewarded for that which he intended so he whose migration was for Allah and his messenger then his migration was for that so without a doubt your giving your spending your charity your sadaqa your zakah it must be done sincerely for Allah and it must be free of showing off because remember those who will be dragged on their faces to the hell fire you have from them the one who fought jihad and he died you have from them the one who had knowledge and he used to teach the people and then you have one who used to spend freely and Allah will ask them why did you do this and the one who spent he mentioned that I did it seeking your face I did it to please you fi sabilillah and Allah mentioned you lied you did it so that the people could say that you have a free hand or you have long hands or so that the people could say that you are generous when you spend when you give you give fi sabilillah you give for the pleasure of Allah you give seeking the face of Allah the reward from Allah you seek Allah's blessings his mercy his forgiveness with charity you do not do it to show off also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that 
There will be seven people who will be under the shade of Allah. Who will be granted, sorry, who will be granted Allah's shade on the day of judgment. Because there are some narrations that mention that the sun will come close. And there will be those who will be sweating profusely. And some people will be drowning in their sweats. Some people, their sweat will reach to their necks. Some people, the sweat will reach up to their ankles. But there are those who will be under the shade, the shade granted by Allah. And you have from them the Mu'adhin. He will have from the longest of necks. But here, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that one of those who will be under the shade is one who gave charity whereby his right hand gave and his left hand did not know how much he gave. He gave charity so secretly that his right hand gave and his left hand did not know how much he gave. He was one who did charity secretly. He gave fisa bilillah. He did not give so the people could say, ah, he's a charitable person. He's a generous person. He feeding the people. He doing this, he doing that. He giving this, he giving that. So again, a reminder to myself firstly, and then to you, when you give, you give fisa bilillah. You give seeking the pleasure of Allah. You do not give to show off to the people to say that you did such and such. Also, charity is from the deeds that Allah rewards and he increases. Because there are those who have this feeling that if they give from their wealth, it would decrease their wealth. But the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O son of Adam, sorry, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Allah said, O son of Adam, spend and I will spend on you. The right hand of Allah is full and overflowing and in nothing would diminish it by overspending day and night. So Allah mentioned, O son of Adam, spend and I will spend on you. And then Allah mentions how he has great reward and virtue and vastness in his right hand. Meaning that when you spend fisabilillah, Allah will compensate you and increase you with reward and virtue. Sort it out for them for one please. Also, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Charity does not diminish wealth, or wealth is not diminished by giving charity. So again, when you give, Allah will increase you in reward, and Allah will repay you, multiply, fully more, many times than what you give. So do not ever think that when you give, fisabilillah, that your wealth will diminish. Do not be stingy, do not be a miser. Also from charity, it is from the ways of seeking protection from the hellfire. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Save yourself from the hellfire even by giving a half of date in charity. Save yourself from the hellfire even by giving half a date in charity so here charity is a form and a means of seeking protection from the punishment and the hellfire also given charity has a high status the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the upper hand is better than the lower hand and as we, we famously say, the hand that gives is better than the hand that receives. 
So those who give have a higher status than those who receive. Also, charity is easy and there are many forms to give charity because sometimes, without a doubt, there are those who may not have the sufficient means to give charity. So here the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, your smiling in the face of your brother is a charity. So do not be stingy brothers when you see your brother give him a smile. This is from charity. Again the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, your smiling in the face of your brother is a charity. Commanding good and forbidding evil is charity. Your giving directions to a man lost in the land is charity for you. Your seeing for a man with bad sight is a charity for you. Your removal of a rock, a thorn, or a board from the road is a charity for you. Your pouring what remains from your bucket into the bucket of your brother is a charity for you. So here, smiling at your brother, even if you may be from those who do not have the means to spend from wealth, you may be poor, miskin, smiling at your brother is a charity. Removing something harmful from the pathway is a charity. Being good and dutiful to your parents, also helping your neighbor, also being those who do good in the community, is a form of charity and given what you have whether it is water or even half a date is from charity so brothers let us be from those who encourage being charitable also being charitable was from the way of the salaf and again the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to encourage them to be charitable and they and they also used to compete in giving charity and abu bakr siddiq from his virtues from the greatness that allah bestowed upon him is that he was from the most charitable of the companions now abu bakr siddiq he was the second khalifa of islam the Khalifa after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was the first Khalifa after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Umar ibn al-Khattab he was the second Khalifa after the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they used to compete in giving charity and they were from amongst the Salaf they were from the best of mankind after the prophets and the messengers and it is mentioned that Zaid ibn Aslam said that he heard Umar ibn al-Khattab saying we were ordered by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give in charity so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called for charity he ordered them to give from their wealth and omar mentioned and that coincided with a time when i had wealth so i said so omar is saying today i will beat abu Bakr because again abu Bakr was the most generous of those from the companions he used to give freely. He used to give fisa bilillah. So he said, today I will beat Abu Bakr. If ever I beat him, so I came with half of my wealth. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, what did you leave for your family? So he said, the like of it. So when the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam called for charity 
Omar ibn al-Khattab said today I will beat Abu Bakr I will give more charity than him so he brought half of his wealth and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked him what did you leave for your family and he mentioned I left the same among the same like meaning that he brought half of his wealth and he left half for his family then Abu Bakr Siddiq came with everything he had so he said oh Abu Bakr what did you leave for your family and he Abu Bakr Siddiq said I left Allah and his messenger for my family by Allah I will never be able to beat him to something this was the words of Omar ibn al-Khattab after he brought half his wealth thinking that he could beat Abu Bakr Siddiq and be more charitable than him Abu Bakr Siddiq came with everything he had and then when they asked him what did you leave for your family he mentioned I left Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam for my family this was the way of the salaf how they used to be charitable la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulk wa lahu alhamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd So again, given charity is from the noblest of deeds whereby you give charity seeking the face of Allah His mercy, His blessings, His forgiveness seeking reward from Allah you give fisabilila to please Allah and you do not give to show off for the people. And again, being charitable is from the deeds that the Salaf used to engage in continuously. And this, without a doubt, this month, the blessed month of Ramadan, is from the greatest of months whereby the deeds are multiplied and we should seek to do extra in this month we should seek to be more charitable in this month and if you are from those who do not have an income if you are from those who do not have a business if you are from those who are mesquine who are poor who do not have then at least you can smile with your brother you can do some good in the community you could remove the harm from the community you could do other acts of charity even if it is half a date and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that the angel jibril alayhi salam came to him and he said whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven he does not enter the paradise then he will enter the hellfire and Allah will cast him far away so say Amin and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Amin this is a month whereby we engage in fasting and we also keep up with the five times solar we keep up with the five times solar in this month and out of this month but in this month we engage in fasting during the daytime from the break of dawn till sunset and also we try to engage in the night prayers qiyamul lail the tawari solar the tahajjud all of these is from the qiyamul lail solatul lail the standing of the night prayer 
Likewise, you can engage in being charitable. As men, we are those who are given authority over the women because why? We spend our wealth and we maintain the women. But again, we have those men, they are so stingy, they do not even want to spend on their family. They do not want to spend on their wife. They do not want to spend on their children. From the manly qualities that a man possesses, and even the disbelievers will attest to this. We men, we spend our wealth. We do not just hoard up our wealth and be miserly like Donald Trump and Jay-Z and these other disbelievers hoarding up your wealth and not being charitable. And when they give charity, they only give charity to evade taxes. We give charity seeking the face of Allah. We give charity to help out the poor Muslims. We give charity so that we could feed people who are fasting. Also, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, <clears throat> it is reported that Muadh bin Jabal, he asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inform me of an act which will cause me to enter Jannah and keep me far from hell. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, you have asked me about a matter of great importance, but it is easy for one for whom Allah makes it easy. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, worship Allah, associate nothing with him in worship. So you must be from those upon Tawheed. If you want to enter Jannah and you want protection from the hellfire, here is some advice. Strive upon Tawheed, worshiping Allah alone and abstaining from worshiping anything besides Allah. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, offer a salah, the prayer. Pay the zakat. Observe some fasting during Ramadan. And perform Hajj, the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, if you can afford it. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shall I not guide you to the gates of goodness? Fasting is a screen from hell. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned before, you could basically say the pillars of Islam, to worship Allah alone and abstain from committing shirk, to offer the salah, and here firstly the five times salah, and also to fast the month of Ramadan, and also to perform the hajj. And then he went on to mention the gates of goodness. Meaning, and again going back to another hadith where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that Allah said, My slave comes close to me by doing that which I commanded him. The obligatory prayers, fasting the month of Ramadan, the Hajj, and giving the zakat, the things that we have to do, the things that are compulsory. And we con continue to come closer to Allah by engaging in the, in the extra deeds, or as we like to say, the sunnah prayers, or the sunnah fast, or giving extra charity. So here, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned from the gates of goodness, you have fasting is a screen from hell. Charity extinguishes the sins. Charity removes the sins. And without a doubt, we are from those who sin night and day. We fall short. Charity removes sins just like water extinguishes the fire. So again, he mentioned fasting is a screen. Charity extinguishes the sins 
as water extinguishes fire and standing in prayers by a slave of Allah during the last third, the last part of the night, then he recited, their sides forsake their beds to invoke their Lord, their rub, in fear and hope, and they, no person knows what is kept hidden from him. Sorry, their sides forsake their beds and they invoke their rub in fear and hope and they spend in charity in Allah's cause out of what we have bestowed on them. No person knows what is kept hidden for him of joy as a reward for what they used to do. Then he added, shall I tell you the root of the matter, its pillar and its highest point? I replied, yes, certainly, O Prophet of Allah. He said the root of the matter, meaning the foundation, is Islam. Its pillar is the solar, and the highest point is jihad. And without a doubt, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions used to fight jihad, he used to call for charity. And the Sahaba, they used to give. They used to give horses, camel, gold. They used to give armor, swords. So all those who like to talk about jihad night and day, and you do not spend your charity, you are only fooling yourself. So he took hold of his tongue. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Shall I tell you of that which holds all these things? And I said, O Messenger of Allah, yes. So he took hold of his tongue and said, Keep this in control. I asked, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shall we really be accounted for what we talk about? He replied, may your mother lose you. People will be thrown on their faces unto the hell on account of their tongues. Also, here is a reminder that whilst you are fasting, you free yourself from the idle speech and the false speech and the backbiting and the slandering and the music and the speech that will topple you into the hellfire. May Allah make us those who engage in righteousness. May Allah make us those who continuously traverse upon the things that we are commanded to do and also we do extra deeds. We do the extra prayers in the night and also there are extra prayers ju during the day may Allah make us those who stand firm performing the tawari the tahajjud the night prayer the prayer of the night may he make us those who do it sincerely seeking his face and not doing it to show off to the people also may Allah make us those who are charitable and May Allah keep us away from being miserly and negardly and stingy. May Allah make us those who give seeking his face, even from the best of our wealth. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Wa akimu salam.